So here's something that we take for granted on planet Earth. Turning. You've probably not given it much thought, but turning is something that earthbound vehicles do really easily. Be it a boat, a car, or a plane, they can all easily turn to point in any direction. With our feet on the ground, turning is also something that we do as human beings every day, without a second thought. However, once you get to space, everything changes. As Sandra Bullock can tell you, without gravity holding you down, and with nothing to push against, once you start spinning in space, you keep spinning, and there's not much you can do about it. One way to get around this, and control which way you're pointing, is something called a reaction control system. Basically, steering jets. The problem with this is that it burns rocket fuel every time it's used. If we want a satellite that can operate in space for years without running out of fuel, we need to use a different approach. One that doesn't rely on outside forces. Let's start by saying what we're not talking about here. We aren't talking about changing a spacecraft's trajectory. For that, we do need an outside force, like rocket thrust or gravity. When I say turning here, what I'm actually talking about is something called attitude control. Being able to rotate the spacecraft to point in a chosen direction. Ideally, we want to be able to do this without expending fuel. Anybody who has played Kerbal Space Program can tell you the answer. Reaction wheels. In the game, these are simply a magic box that can apply a torque to the spacecraft, and only use electricity. Effectively, if you add these to your spacecraft, you'll have unlimited control over rotation, and you'll never have to burn any fuel to do it. In the real world of spacecraft design, it's a bit more nuanced and interesting, especially for craft like Earth observation satellites or space telescopes that need to point precisely at targets and operate for years at a time. So how do reaction wheels work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Let's say you have a spacecraft and you want to rotate it around an axis. A reaction wheel is literally just a wheel mounted inside the spacecraft that rotates around the same axis. The principle we are using here is the conservation of angular momentum. In the absence of other forces, the total angular momentum, the angular momentum of the spacecraft added to the angular momentum of the wheel, will remain constant. Simply put, if you increase the speed of rotation of the wheel, you decrease the speed of rotation of the spacecraft, or in fact make it turn in the opposite direction. Since the spacecraft is larger and weighs more than the wheel, the speed of rotation of the wheel will be a lot faster than the speed of rotation of the spacecraft. The theory is simple enough, but I thought a practical demonstration would be a lot more fun. OK, so here is our satellite. And it's a sort of CubeSat thing, made of a bunch of ABS panels. And this is a remote control that I've made using an Arduino control system. So if I select this switch here, I can actually control the speed of the wheel inside it. So I set it going, and if I increase the speed of the wheel, or decrease the speed of the wheel, Round and round goes the satellite. Of course, the reason that we want a reaction wheel is attitude control. So if I switch into this other mode across here, what I can do is I can actually start pushing on the satellite. And applying a torque will actually speed up the reaction wheel. Pressing on the other side will slow it down. So what's actually going on is the satellite's trying to maintain an orientation and it's using the reaction wheel to do that. What I can also do is I can use this joystick and I can command the satellite to turn. And these buttons here do 90 degree turns. See, I can go one way or the other.
So how does it work? Let's open it up and show you what's going on inside. It actually looks quite complicated in here, that's because I've repurposed this board from something else. But what we've got in here is, this is a lithium polymer battery that's in this sort of central core. That's linked up to a micro Arduino, which has a radio receiver. And this green thing here is a sensor, very similar to the one that I used on my Arduino glider. The rest of this is, is built so that I can attach servos and power them and I've got another project in mind for it. And attached to the Arduino there's this. This is a motor speed controller which takes the bulk of the power from the battery. But if I turn this over, this here is where the magic comes from. This is a wheel actually CNC'd out of acrylic. The original wheel that I used is actually was a 3D printed one out of ABS and I was very unhappy with this one because it wasn't the tolerances weren't good enough and it was causing vibration as it turned. So I made the second one out of acrylic which is a lot better. So what's actually happening What's the Arduino actually doing? Well, the Arduino has a couple of modes. In one mode, it literally receives the instructions from the radio for the throttle setting. And then it sends a, a servo signal to the speed controller controlling the speed of the motor. So that's one mode. But the other mode is an attitude control mode. And that uses the gyro here. And it's similar to the Arduino glider, but it's a lot simpler. The gyro tells the Arduino what speed the box is rotating and if you do that a hundred times a second you literally just add that up and it keeps track of how much it's turned. The Arduino uses a PID control loop to control the speed of the wheel to point the box in the desired direction. So it's been quite a learning experience for me learning how to tune a PID loop. So let's demonstrate this thing with the lid off. So what I can demonstrate is if I let go of the box now, the total momentum of the box and the wheel is constant. So if the speed of the wheel increases, the speed of the box decreases and the box rotates in the opposite direction. If the speed of the wheel decreases, the speed of the box increases and the box rotates in the opposite direction. Which is all very cool. So what I'll show you now is the automatic mode, because this is even cooler, I think. So switch it into automatic mode. And here I don't have to do anything with the controller. But I can accelerate the wheel. Stop that swinging. So the box will keep the same attitude. And if I apply a torque to the box, it will change the speed of the wheel to maintain the same attitude. What I can also do is I can use this joystick and it will rotate the box. Likewise these buttons. For a 90 degree turn. And of course, I can slow it down to a stop by doing this. So what don't they tell you in Kerbal Space Program? Well, there's something called wheel saturation. And I'll demonstrate that, but I'll explain it first because it gets quite loud. Essentially, if an outside force keeps acting on the satellite, the speed of the wheel will keep increasing up until the point where the wheel can't go any faster. So let's demonstrate that now. To compensate for the force, the wheel has to get faster and faster and faster and faster until eventually it has to reach a limit. In this case, the limit is where I get scared and cut the power. 
Of course, in real spacecraft, when the wheel reaches saturation, that's when thrusters have to be used to offload some of the torque. In the case of real-world spacecraft, which operate in three dimensions, a single reaction wheel is not sufficient. To stabilise the spacecraft in three axes, a minimum of three reaction wheels are required, one for each axis. In fact, a common arrangement is actually four wheels in something like a pyramid or tetrahedral arrangement, which actually allows full control of the spacecraft, even in the event that one of the wheels fails. Reaction wheels also shouldn't be confused with a similar technology called control moment gyros, which tend to be used on larger spacecraft, for example the Hubble Space Telescope or the International Space Station. These are similar to reaction wheels, but use gimbal mounts to tilt the wheels rather than changing the speed of rotation. They can be lighter, but they're also more mechanically complex. Who knows, one day I might make a different video about those. In any case, that's all I have for you today. This has been a fun little project, and I really enjoyed being able to demonstrate this aspect of real-world spacecraft design to you. If you liked the video, please do be sure to leave a comment, and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. See you in the next video. I think that a fair few of you who are watching this video are young enough that you will get to visit space. When you do, the vehicle that you fly in won't look like this. It will look like this.